Welcome back to the channel on this cold and windy Sunday morning. Uh, we're here in my neighbour's workshop because my lift uh, isn't installed yet, uh, so I'm using his pit. We've got the L3 T2 with us, so we're going to give this thing a thorough service this morning. Uh, there was some history with it, but I couldn't find anything in the most recent service. Don't know what was done, so we're just going to give it a full service just to be on the safe side and the transmission is the main thing we're going to look at. So, I'm going to take you underneath here. Uh, it's only my second time underneath this thing. Let's just look at the subframe, the um, rust protection has come off it. It's not bad though, we just need to clean this thing up. I won't get it done today, but next day we got it in here. I think I'm going to clean it up and um, thoroughly paint it. Uh, this is the big thing we're going to service today. This is the um, GM 5 speed autobox. And this thing uh, is a notorious weak point. You see, there's a sticker uh, right here. Which, I'm just trying to focus on that. Lifetime oil, no oil change. So, um, this is basically what causes these boxes to fail is this directive on here not to change the oil. I would doubt that this is the first day box. Um, I would say this has had a gearbox during its lifetime with the mileage that's on it because it changes quite smoothly. So um, we give it uh, some oil and fresh filter and we'll see how we do. So before I go draining any oil out of this thing, I'm gonna make sure that um, I can remove this plastic oil filter hosing. Uh, you should always check that you're able to refill something and change the filters before you drain it and find out afterwards so I'll just get the tool for that so this is um, the tool that my late father-in-law made for me many years ago for the plastic filter housing on my Jag that I had at the time and turns out it fits the BMW as well which is useful so I'm just going to pull this filter Make sure that the filter I have is the correct one. And cut out before I heard of taking the filter off something, the oil drain and everything, just to discover that I mean supplied the wrong filter. It did not work out well. filter and check it. So definitely got the correct filter so I can go ahead and drain the sump. So let's see now the sump plug move. Mm, good. So this thing mightn't have gone that long since this last service. Just gonna put the camera down now. You can watch me get covered in oil. That was clever. I probably should have bought a new drain plug, but um, this one actually looks pretty much brand new, I would say, to change it last service. Well, this thing was sold to me, I was fully serviced, but um, still prefer to do it myself, so I know exactly what's been done. It's just no harm, especially at this mileage, and uh, it doesn't cost a lot of money, so say for plus, um, I didn't like the quality, for example, the fuel filter that's on it, it's causing problems, so just as well to um, do everything. Like most um, cars of this age, it's got a um, paper element filter. Let's find somewhere to pop this. I'm just going to go and empty out the contents of the housing and we we'll start to put it together. So, it's going to. First, I'd have my picks out at all. It's going to prise the um, o ring off. 
got a replacement door ring in the kit and usefully we've also got a um, sump washer in there. That's nice. Place a good quality filter. So let's clean up the housing a bit more. Because the um, filter housing is inverted, there's really no point in pre-oiling it because we're just going to pour oil all over the uh, engine if we do that. So it's going to fit the oiling. Into the groove, and I'm just going to get some fresh oil to uh, shave it rub out here. Just rub a bit of oil on that. Um, Boring, just get it to seat properly. There's the seal. And get our filter. Okay, ready to go back. And there is actually a torque spec in this thing, so I'm gonna see if I uh, get a socket big enough to fit it. And if I do, we torque it down. Just take the tool box. Okay, we're good at that. Uh, yeah. Put in our drain plug. Not gonna go crazy with it. Because there really isn't a need. Okay. Pop her up at oil. So I double checked on the uh old internet there and turns out this thing takes 8.75 litres. No, plenty of oil, but uh, just leaving this one empty and fully and grab another can and start. Strangely, just reading um, some stuff online there while I'm filling it. On the engine oil, I just wanted to double check the capacity and um, they recommend everything from 5W30, 5W40, 5W50 or 1040 uh, for this engine. This is from a, a very reputable um, Land Rover specialist. And um, the big thing is the specifications, which are A3 and B3, which um, the oil I'm using meets. So, yeah, I was a little bit nervous for a second when I saw the <laughs> mention of um, 530 and things. So, if you're watching this, just um, tell me, comment below, tell me what you use in yours. So, we've got um, 8 litres in, and we're registering on the I have filled up the dipstick, so I'm just going to fire it up now and um, let it circulate the oil for a few seconds and we shut it down and top it up again. Let's remove the tools I have. Double check everything. Filter it sitting right. Where did you go? It's probably going to take it um, a little bit of time to get oil pressure, hopefully not long. What did I do with my keys? Got them. So, let's watch that oil light. Hmm. Oil pressure instantly. That's good. Check the levels. Yep, so she's on the minimum. Top her up. Okay, so we're ready to move on to the gearbox. Um, this is the kit I got from Whip Part. So it comes with the filter, um, new sump gasket. And a new set of um, steering bolts. So, same thing as the engine now, just get on and make sure that um, both the drain plug and the filler plug will crack open before I touch anything. And uh, let's start draining the transmission now. It's just a um, torque spit here to undo. So, I've already got this loosened. Just gonna put the camera down. Oh, it's starting to drain already. Thank you. 
uh, in the exam. Pretty bad, but it doesn't spell particularly burnt or anything. So, hopefully, there's no transmission issues. Right, that's draining. I'm going to grab a 10 millimeter socket and start to undo the bolts. Just going to try and undo these kind of evenly as well so that I don't risk warping. So just crack them all a little at a time. Right, let's get this sump down. Okay, <laughs> so you can see the state of the oil in this thing. Um, that filter is pretty grubby, so we're just going to let her drip dry there for a while. But while we do that, down here in the bottom of the sump is a magnet. And well, there is some sludge in it, there's no um, big chunks of metal or anything. So, that looks pretty good. Yeah, it um, doesn't look like much like transmission oil anymore, but yeah, confident enough that that's going to be okay. So, um, what we have to do now is let her drip for a while, then we pull the filter, um, clean the mating surface, here, we're going to give this sump thoroughly clean out and um, start reassembling her. So, I must say, access under these things is absolutely fantastic. Ah. Got an attempt to pull the filter out. Now, it should be just a case of it's held in here by a um, couple of oarlings, it should just be a case of catching it and wiggling it. Here we go. Out. Oh. That came right out, and you can see there's one plastic ring there, but there should be two. So you, you could just see that orange um, o ring stuck up in there. This is come out now. I'm just going to drain this filter. And I'm just going to put the camera down for a minute. Okay, so I'm just going to get that o ring. Oh, so it's going to pop. And then another one. Oh. Right, second piece up in there. I need to get that out. Clean off my exhaust. So, as mentioned underneath, there's that plastic ring and there's this rubber row ring. Now, this seems to be two different halves, so one half has come out. I just need to get um, a hoop tool in and pull the other half out. So, you just need to make sure that when you take a filter out of one of these, that you've got everything that's shown on here. So, I'm going to try and get the oil gasket off. Intact if possible. Right, 
batteries. I'm freeze the magnet out of the bottom. So that's it, sits in there. Uh, I think what we'll do is um, actually fill up the steam washer and give this thing a thorough steam cleaning. Just get some of the oil out of there first, the paper. So, for some sort of fairly thorough clean, so the steam washed it and then I um, just used a bit of carburetor cleaner and some cloth just to get any uh, final little bits of moisture out of there. I'll give it one more clean before it goes back on. I just want to start now around the edge and um, just cleaning up the, the mating surface for the gasket. Sump is pretty clean. Um, I've cleaned up the mating surfaces as best I can in the gearbox, but to be honest, it's difficult and I keep getting transmission fluid in my eyes and in my mouth and things. Uh, finally managed to get that um, O-ring out as well, so I'm going to go and pop the filter in and drop this sump on. So, you can see the plastic collar in there is now sitting against the gearbox and the little locator there is in place. So, we'll uh, set you back down here and we will grab the sump and start putting that on. Spotless and just gonna rub a tiny little bit of ATF on this gasket as it goes on. So, just a tiny bit. I don't think it's a side it looks the same inside. And that's it. Start tarking these things down. Okay, we're done. Just need to tighten this up. So I went to my um, parts supplier yesterday to buy a Nile syringe to um, 
filled this because the plug is up here, but um, they didn't have one. I bought some um, ones from a veterinary supply, but they're only 100 mils and it'll take too long. So I rigged this piece of pipe, just tie wrapped it to the prop shaft, stuck it into the filler plug, and it's going up into the engine bay. I've got this dainty little funnel on the end of it. So then just pour my fluid in here. Let it drain down. Hopefully, if I fill it slow enough, this will work. So, we've got about um, approximately 5.2 litres into it, and it's just started to leak out. So, let's kind of snip this and pull the hose out. I'm just going to sit it there because we're going to have to refill it again soon. I need to find the drain plug, which is here, and close it up. Okay, so we're going to, um, what we're going to do is we're going to fire her up in a second. I'm just going to get diagnostics ready here. Oh, let's hang this somewhere I can get that. Uh, so what we're going to have to do is monitor the um, transmission temperature. And we get to the right uh, temperature then, which is 35 to 45 degrees. We are going to have to top the gearbox up again. So it's going to go in here. And we have a sequence that we're going to run through. Um, just run the gears through to back. Oh no, please don't. She, I'm just going to fire the engine up now. Can't. Ah, put it into the wrong um, mode. You can see all the lights coming on the dashboard. There's checking all the systems. Right, so we are going to go to. Automatic transmission. Uh, view data. And uh, we are going to go to oil temperature. And select and F2. So let's fire her up and hope for the best. Okay. So now I get the cycler through gears, so we are going to go reverse, pause for a second, neutral, pause for a second, drive, pause for a moment, then we're going to go back to neutral. Pause, reverse, pause, park, pause, then we're going to go through the sequence again, and Back again. And now we're going to come down here and we're going to go to sport and we're going to change one. To two, to three, three, four. No one allow me to change any higher. Go back to the start. Know how that is. Uh, 
I used to do that in the past as well. Um, don't ask me how I'll try it this way, I want to do it or not. So I'm just going to go and run through again. So the final top up on this gearbox has to be done at between 35 and 45 degrees with the engine running and transmission in part. So two degrees to go, nearly there. Okay, magic number, 35 degrees, and top it up. So I opened up the um, air filter housing to replace the filter, but um, it would appear the filter is brand new. I'm just going to pull it on and take a closer look. If I can get this cover out of the way. Ah, two seconds. So, it appears this thing might actually have been fully serviced. Um, air filter is like brand new. So, just going to chuck that back in there again. Big question now is have I improved it or made it worse? Let's get it out in the road and see how it behaves. So, uh, ooh. I think it just changed gear there and I wouldn't have known if it wasn't for the revs falling. She's laboring badly, but no power. I need to pull over. I think I know what's happened. Oh, and I just knocked her into neutral. Um, I don't have the warning on the dash anymore about the no pressure fuel sensor, so I think I just plugged it back in accidentally. So I've got no power whatsoever. I'm just going to pull over. Pull that out. Should hopefully do it. Get to drive. Oh, my seatbelt. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, those changes are just silky, silky smooth. Oh, nice. Very, very nice. Just gonna shut the window. Just so you can hear me. Um, uh, yeah, she's changing gear a lot nicer. I think anyhow. I need a longer run to tell but yeah, I think that's definitely improved the situation a bit. Okay, the next job is to swap out this fuel filter. I've just been looking at the original and um, I noticed that it's wet, as well as the sensor. And um, somebody butchered the um, tar screw holding in that sensor. So that wouldn't help get um, air in the system. So we get this off. We we'll draw the sensor and take the filter off. Got the new uh, filter here, it's a Bosch filter, and 
Jeez, this thing is really in there. I'm gonna have to wiggle it around a bit. And it's out. So that o-ring I reckon has probably failed. That's where the fuel is coming from. Okay, so I'm going to fill up the new filter with diesel. Filter full. Okay, let's see if she fires up. Now I'm going to put on, I believe this thing will prime for about 20 seconds when you turn the ignition on. So I'm going to switch it on. All right, I'm going to try for it up. So back down here um, next to the main air filter lives the crankcase um, ventilation filter. Now this filter apparently regularly gets overlooked uh, during servicing and if it blocks it um, can take out the turbo pretty quickly, pressurizes the entire oil system um, more than it should be. So I'm going to get this thing out and we have got modified kit which um, in theory should never again have to be serviced so let me get this thing out of here okay so that's the um, injector wiring harness free and just move that out of the way now and get my allen key down in there and open unit you can just see yes I think that this um, filter is definitely has to sell by yet should probably have been replaced a long time ago Start the new seals. OK, 
Okay, so there are the new seals in place. We're going to do um, one last job today, and that is to get rid of the CGR valve. Well, that was a miserable experience getting those bottom bolts off, but um, we've got the EGR out and it does not look good. It is pretty dirty. Give you a better view of it after. I'm just going to um, clean this out of it and um, put in the blanking plate. Also managed to drop one of the bolts into the bottom of the engine bay, so let's go looking for that in a minute. Uh, I just dropped the second one. Right, better find it. Okay, so that's installed. Um, I just missing one of the bolts. Dropped it into the engine bay. Find that in a minute. Um, I've plenty of spares on them, so I can replace it with a different one. So, uh, just show you the condition of the valve. I'm going to clean this and um, keep it somewhere safe in case I need to refit it for any reason. And um, let's just get some of the blank little vacuum line, and I think we can fire it up. Okay, let's fur it up. Oh, well, we got a bad leak here. This is a new one on me. Um, we're underneath, and that melted mess right there is the tensioner pulley. It's actually seized and melted. So that would explain that um, weird smell I've been getting at some time. And here's the reason that pulley seized. That's the M6 bolt that we dropped when replacing the EGR valve so it found its way across the engine bay and dropped between the engine block and that idler pulley jamming it and essentially burning it out so there's new one does in order we're gonna have to fit that in the next video
got to say, this place looks absolutely beautiful this evening. Let me swing around so you can see this direction. It's the first proper um, off-road use she's got now. Just up here um, today doing some repairs and fences and um, just cutting any grass and things that's grown up around the electric fences. Uh, replacing broken stakes, straining up the wires. But um, this thing is perfect. Just a little trailer behind me. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Next time we'll start out that pulley and belt. And we're also going to do some painting on the underside, a few more jobs. And we've also got to replace some of the fuel pumps because that fitting that new fuel filter did nothing. So I'm going to replace that in tank pump and hopefully that will get her circuit. Uh, also going to be bringing you videos on the Dexta and the, the Cat very shortly. And we've got a couple of new projects coming to the workshop. So stay tuned for those. Make sure you hit the like button below, leave a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Huge thanks to those of you who have subscribed so far and a lot of loyal subscribers out there taking the time to comment and like the videos. Thank you guys, very much appreciated and uh, really helps keep me going. So have a good one, see you soon.